Okay! BBR Season 4 Grand Finals. We are taking on Jack, aka Gravy, in what is the most important match all season for a lot of reasons. So if you guys are excited for today's Pokemon Wi-Fi battle, make sure to like button and subscribe button down below. Um, there are a lot of reasons why we need to beat Jack today. Number one, it's obviously finals. Number two, he's the reigning champion, so we can't let him have a back-to-back. -back. Number three, the storyline of me becoming shadow banned by mid Bokey Master from the BBR to winning the BBR would be an insane storyline. And number four, this is a revenge match for my boys. Because Gray was on the other side of the playoff bracket and knocked out both of my boys in Owen and Jay Bear. So this is the revenge match. So there's a lot riding on this game. There's no Obama Snow. He brought Tauros Water instead of Tauros Fire, which is awesome. Um, he brought Iron Shreds, not Obama Snow. He brought Glade. I need to lock my six in. Um, sh big shouts to Owen and Delray. They helped me grind out this team. I had a first edition of this team. That sucked donkey dick. But we spent a couple hours grinding out like, sets and ideas and builds and uh, also I think Amol was there. So that's Amol as well and Ant. I think that I think the whole PST gang was there. Shouts to all of them. Shouts to all my boys. Uh, wouldn't be here without them and especially in this game. But I have really good confidence in my team and really good confidence in this game. He leads with X Mortis the. Sir, why are you in the ground? <laughs> <laughs> he leads with this thing. He has to switch potentially fearing Earthquake, but also he has to stay regular. I'm just going to U-turn right off the bat. He's going to Witcher off fearing Earthquake, so that's being chilling with me. He could go hard gl no, hard glimmer shot of play. Into Water Bowl. Okay. Water Bowl is good. He doesn't have Psychic Resists. Oh, no, he has Iron Shards. Helmet? Helmet Bowl. Okay. Okay, Gengar or Gardevoir? I think Gengar is the correct play here. Bilbo gets rocks, which is also important. I could go Breloom here. I'm still SD. I should have changed it to Spore. Damn it. I didn't think about that. Um, yeah, because this is free Dirge here. Fuck, I should have changed it to Spore. I'm going to make an aggro play here on the Dirge play. Because he should go Dirge expecting a Grass move. Um, worst case scenario, he clicks Zen Headbutt. I would draw. I could be faster, but I doubt it. I could be faster because he could be bulky. Which is also good information. But I'll, otherwise, Gastron is fine here. He just CCs raw. Ow, what the hell? Okay. Okay, this is recoverable. He can't water move there. So Gengar is free. Gengar is free. Yep. Okay. We can psychic this thing and get rid of it. This should force in treads. Treads will let me get the Gastrodon back in, and Gastrodon can kind of re recover what I need it to. Why did he sap Water Bowl like that? I don't get it. <laughs> Into Iron Treads. To Mongo Fan. I want to see if there's AV damage. Gengar. That did nothing. No leftovers. That's definitely AV damage. Does my Gastrodon die to... I might die to two hits coming in. I really want to go aggro Slither here. Because I don't want to switch in on EQs. If I get knocked, it kind of sucks. But at least I get the slow momentum in a Gastrodon so I can live the hit and then get rocks up. Ugh. I didn't think he would make an aggressive play like that that early. Fuck me, bro. Fuck me. Not. Lose my band. He's forced out, though. So I can U-turn here. Should be a dirge switch. He's gonna Volt. That's fine. Does nothing. So he's Volt, Knock, EQ. He's not... Probably Spin. Volt, Knock, Earthquake. Probably Rapid Spin means Glamora is his hazard setter which makes sense back in a back in a water bowl okay since he's so adamant about throwing away his Tauros like that I'm gonna punish him for it and go Breloom well Dirgy gives me Gastrodon 
So I guess that's fine. Since he's so adamant about throwing out his fucking thing here, let's just fucking click it. If he goes in a dirge this time, whatever, it's still chip, and I can get Gastron in. And if he wants to sack off his Tauros for whatever reason, that works for me. I guess he was fearing a rock move on like an overpredict, but he still makes that 50 50. Like he's still stuck, and he can't Terra his dirge. He's Terra Steel dirge. He just sacked Water Bowl. Why? Why? Why are you so adamant about sacking Water Bowl? <laughs> I don't get it. Why did you not want Water Bowl? Okay, <laughs> it just died. He just died to one bullet seed. <laughs> okay, he just didn't want Water Bowl. All right, good to know, Jack. That didn't want the Pokemon that just ruined my life, but that's fine. Um, oh, I wish I was fucking Spore. God damn it. Or rock move. I don't know why I'm Sword Dance on this set. That was such a stupid bring. Forgot to change it. Anything I just mock punch though. Even Gallade's gonna get mock punched for good chip. Into Glim Reality. I don't really want to mock punch this thing. I'll be honest. <laughs> I know I said I mock punch anything. I don't really want to mock punch this thing. Although I just mock punch to break Sash, and then I bring in Gengar to Psychic. Yeah, I'm just gonna mock punch to break Sash. Bonk. That's almost a two at Gale. God damn. Toxic Debris. He should kill me off here. He should kill me off here. Reflect. Okay. Reflect. Okay. He might not kill me and let me die to... He might not kill me and let me die to Life Orb. Which, if he does, that's fine. Like, if he goes for a Light Screen or some shit here. Because either way, it's going up, right? Yeah. So at least I trade the Glim here. Glim should die as well as I go down. And I have, uh, I have, what's his name? Um, Chen Pao to break, break things. So I just have to go Gengar in this turn. Please kill. Breloom, Breloom, I need you to come through. I need you to come through. One more, one more, one more. That's my boy. Yes, sir. Okay. We go Gengar here. We go Gengar here. Oh, I wish I was debonding Gengar. Breloom goes down. We go Gengar here, or we bite the bullet, let Chen Pao get poisoned, and break the screens. I'm going Gengar and running here to the T-Spike. He can't win with Gallade. It's just not possible. Not against my team. If it's Dirgy, that's fine. If it's Treads, whatever. And if it's Bundle, Ex Mortis. Who's this? The Dirgy. Dirgy, you say. Get rid of T-Spike. Yeah, I take two Shadow Balls. I'm going into Gastrodon. I'm shifting this momentum back in my favor. No T-Spike is big. If he Torch Songs, whatever. If he Willows, I live the Hex. He Terra Steals. So he's not Terra Gallade, which is good for him, to be fair, because then he's not weak to Fighting move or um, First Impression. But Terra Steal Dirge is good for me. Because I can recover up here. And I can get up hazards. He does Shadow Ball. Should munch. 106 down to 60. That doesn't matter, doesn't matter. He's unaware, he's unaware. I have to recover here, which means I don't get rocks, but it's fine. He's power or What? Okay. That's not the biggest issue. I also might live this, because it is a skeleton. I don't. Okay. Power Herb Solar Beam. I can, yeah, I can Chen Pao and Brick Break here. Chen Pao gets burned, but Gardevoir is in an amazing position now that this thing is Terrid. So, I'm kind of chilling here. I just Terra and Brick Break, so I'm not weak to Fire or Steel. And whatever he switches, he loses screens to get rid of that. Chen Pao plus OTR Guard plus Scarf Gengar can still win this game. Like, I have enough pieces to still comfortably win this game. If he misses Willow, I might win the game right here. <laughs> if he misses Willow Wisp, I might win the video game right here. What is he missing, though? Because he's Shadow Ball, Solar Beam. He's either no slack off or no fire move. Get rid of the screens. 
big. Torch song. So he's just no Willow. That's fine. I'll fucking do it again. I'll fucking do it again, dude. I'll fucking do it again. And you can't comfortably switch into Gallade. You cannot safely switch into Gallade because I could crunch here for all you know. So you can't make a switch. You have to give me Dirgy. Gallade is an insane person to play because he knows nothing about my, uh, my Chen Pao. He just knows I have Brick Break. <laughs> so, he has to give me Dirgy. Because you can't switch Gallade here. You can't do that. That's not a play that real people make. Yeah, he gives me Dirgy. No screens and Dirgy's dead. That opens up Gardevoir a shit ton. Especially because Gengar still exists to pressure Thingy. Scarf Chen Pao is faster than Gallade. This is why we brought this thing. Scarf Chen Pao is faster than plus two Gallade. I'm like 99% sure. I'm faster than plus two Gallade. So as long as I get chip on it, it dies. So what we do is if he brings in Gallade here, I go hard Slitherwing because Psychic moves not a click, get first impression damage off, Revenge with this thing. We're sitting pretty. I like where I'm at right now. Banta Claws. Does Brick Break one-shot you? I don't think it does. It doesn't one-shot. I don't want to reveal I'm scarfed. I don't get a choice. <laughs> I didn't get a goddamn choice. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, I just set up OTR on the next thing. I Brick Break here. He's Chopple. He's Chopple Bird. Okay. Sub. Well, that's not gonna work for you, bro. That's not gonna work. That's not gonna work out for you now, is it? <laughs> that's not gonna work out for you now, my my boy. That's not gonna work out for you. That's not gonna work out. Nuh uh. Not me, bro. Not me. Nuh uh. I am Scarf Chen Pizzy. I am Scarf Chen Pizzy. Miss a Hydro Pump for me. Oh my god, who hits? 21, can you do something for me? Can you miss a little hydro pump for me at 21? Does first impression kill without my band? It should, yeah. First impression should blow this thing away. So I can first impression, because if he brings in Great Tusk or Gallade, that's the chip I need. Not Great Tusk, a uh, fucking iron dickhead. How do I position this correctly, though? I might have just thrown... I might have just thrown, actually. This was an awful play. Because I just saw my kill. Can I recover? No, I think I just threw. My play there was Gardevoir. I think I just threw. Wait, 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 wait. He doesn't have a steel move. He doesn't have a steel move. His last move is Rabbit Spin. He has to. Hold on. Maybe I didn't throw. Maybe I didn't throw. He shouldn't have a steel move. His last move should be Rabbit Spin. Which means Gardevoir can set up Trick Room. Gengar can break to win. Sack this. Go Gengar. Hit the damage. Go Gardevoir. Set up Trick Room. Win. Get laid. He can't kill me here. Well, he kills me here. He clicks Psycho move. He clicks Psychic move. I go Gengar. Spam Shadow Ball. Go Gardevoir. Win. Yeah. SD. Unless he wins with Shadow Sneak. That's the only thing. Does Gardevoir live a plus two Shadow Sneak from Gallade? I feel like it might. It doesn't, so I have to sack a Pokemon to win. I give him Gengar, because Gardevoir is my best way to win. Gardevoir is my best way to win here. He has Sneak. Gengar goes down. My boy comes back. If he's Protect, he wins. And I don't think I have any other out to that. If he's Protect, he wins. He switches out. No, he was just thinking. Chip. That's in range of Focus Blast. I 
I may as well U-turn and keep this for first impression, just in case this doesn't kill me for some reason. He can't kill me. Yeah, he can't kill me. He can't kill me. So I U-turn to get the slow momentum into Gardevoir. He has a steel move! So, I just got flinched during a finals game. Are you surprised to see me? <laughs> um, let's talk about it. And let's talk over this end game because I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sit here and lie and say I wasn't salty because I was, but my commentary makes no sense in this in these last couple minutes here. And I'll kind of explain why. It wasn't even out of pure anger or salt either. It's literally just me spewing out nonsense because I think that the game is over for a different reason. I, let, let me walk you through this. So obviously we get flinched by the iron treads. We clicked U-turn, arguably my worst play, but not a game losing play. Um, because how this sequence plays out here is we get flinched and we sack off Mr. Slitherwing. Um, and we sack off Mr. Slitherwing. So then obviously after Slitherwing, last but not least is Gardevoir, who comes and sets up Trick Room. Gardevoir, I think, in my head, dies to Ironhead. Didn't calc it, but obviously a fair assumption to make. We did live the Ironhead, however, so now we have Trick Room and we land the Focus Blast. Uh, and actually we kill the Iron Tread, so he was not very spadef invested with the AV. So Gardevoir, by herself, isn't able to win this game because counterpart Gallade exists. And we, unfortunately, are going to lose 1-0 to Jack in what would be a flinched, flinch-caused finals. Um, but in the end, I end up, I end up kind of not, not being salty, but kind of just being confused over the fact that Jack had Iron Head over Rapid Spin, which in hindsight was really dumb because that shouldn't affect how I play. Um... But also in the sense that like it didn't change anything, him having Iron Head over Rapid Spin. The only thing it changed is that I got flinched and won him the game, <laughs> you know? Um, and I won I won in both ways. I'll, I'll explain to you guys how I won with the play that I did make and what my most optimal play was to better confirm the game. Um, so let's rewind here. So here I'm hovering back and forth, back and forth. My correct play here actually is close combat. Should have went with my gut, click close combat. Um, after talking to Jack, Jack was like, well, I was very close to doubling back into Gallade, but it wouldn't have mattered in the long run, I don't think, if he made the double into Gallade. Um, because I don't think Gallade was super healthy, was it? Was Gallade super healthy? No, it wouldn't have been able to take the close combat very well, because we were banded Slither. Um, unless, did we get knocked at some point? I think we got knocked, so I don't think he would have lived, but in the odd chance he might have, it was also not the most ideal situation to be in if I click close combat, but my correct play there is to close combat because I kill the iron treads, Meg, or yeah, if he doesn't double, I kill the iron treads, Gallade comes in, uh, Gallade versus Slithering, I sack off my Gardevoir to the Gallade, and then I bring in this thing in first impression. The only ways that a sequence of plays loses is if, um, uh, what's it called? If he has protect on his Gallade, which he didn't, but if he did, then I did actually lose in that way. My play, however, uh, I did click U-turn, as you guys saw, and U-turn also won me the game. The only re the, the only difference between U-turn and close combat is that U-turn puts my win on about a 30% chance to lose in the sense of uh, hitting a Focus Blast, which, to be fair, is the exact same thing as how it plays out anyways, because we click U-turn, and then I keep this, so it's the same idea with the Gallade, and I bring in my Gardevoir against the Iron Treads, but I still have Gallade in the back, so then, or not Gallade, Slitherwing in the back. So then Gardevoir sets up Trick Room, hits Focus Blast, kills Iron Treads. Pretty straightforward. In comes Gallade, picks off my Gardevoir, but the difference between this game and the original is that I would have had Slitherwing in the back to first impression the Gallade, and again, only lose if he has Protect, which again, Jack didn't. Um, so it would have been really tough. It, it, would, it, it wasn't really tough, but it was really unfortunate that, um, that the flinch happens and ends our season like that, which to be fair, um, it, it is Mons, it's 30%, and obviously it was a hell of a game against Jack. Um, I'll leave it on that screen. It was a hell of a game against Jack. Um, we couldn't have brought it any closer, and I'm actually very content with how I played. I think I had a couple misplays, but for the most part, I'm very content with how I played, 
and uh, how much I grinded out the team with Dell and Owen and really got it down to a, almost a science and you know basically just kind of adapting. I think I overplayed a lot around the Tauros, which put me behind, which after talking to Jack, he really, uh, he didn't have anything for Spore, which hindsight was really dumb. I didn't realize till I got in the game that I forgot to switch Sword Stance to Spore, which was my intention. Um, I was Sword Stance in the first build, and then I meant to switch it to Spore because I never clicked Sword Stance with Breloom. It was there to break and put them to sleep. So that kind of put me behind, but obviously that's my own fault. That's me being stupid. Um, shouldn't have overplayed as much around the uh, Tauros as well. I think that was a big thing was um, really kind of just playing stupidly around this Tauros trying to like fucking you know take half of my Gastron because I really expect them to switch into the Skeledurge but getting Skeledurge in was part of my game plan because once Skeledurge came in that gave me free Gastrodon, Gastrodon gave me free rocks, and then once rocks were up, him pivoting around, taking chip, gave me information on boots, gave me information on items, gave me free chip on whatever went in and out, and the sooner that, um, not Crocolor, uh, Skeledurge tear it into steel, uh, the better for me, because obviously then it couldn't switch into Breloom and such. So, I kind of misplayed around that, I should have just taken my damage, forced in that Skeledurge, and then, um, got into Gastrodon, but... Uh, because I didn't have Spore, I was more scared of the Skeletorge coming in, which to be fair, I should have had Rock Tomb in that last slot over anything, or Spore, uh, to hit Skeletorge incoming. But that's, you know, that's kind of hindsight 2020. Uh, I should have realized that in building, though. That was kind of a choke in build. Other than that, I'm very content with how I built, with how I played, how I built the team. I was very happy with how this game kind of turned out. Um, yeah, I'm kind of scrolling through just to see. I really like this aggressive play with Braylon here on the, uh, on the rocks there to get rid of the... Um, Glamora to kind of get myself that early advantage and then going Gengar to get rid of T-Spike that was a huge part of our plan as well was getting rid of Glamora early and then forcing an aggressive in Gengar to get rid of T-Spike so overall very happy and very proud of not only this game but the entire season as a whole um, let me get back to that end screen so we can kind of hang out here and chat um, yeah very happy with how the season went as a whole um, overall record of what we went five and two in regular season and then two and one in playoffs. So seven and three overall record in my first season of Gen 9 on Wi Fi. Not a single game going to timer from my end. And honestly, at all, I don't think we had a single game go to timer all season, which was super good. Obviously, this game get, got very close, but for finals, I was actually impressed that we both made it through. And to be fair, um, I think I took most of it, but Jack also took a lot of time around the bright loop and stuff. So I think it was very back and forth, but no game going to timer, no loss differential or anything like that. Um, because of that, very proud of how I play this season. Obviously I did have that little two week slump with uh, Shay into Q. You guys could probably tell both from the videos and from the videos after that I was not myself during that time. And uh, you also could see it in my play and my builds as well, that I really wasn't me. But that's obviously not, you know, taking away from Q and Shay's wins. They both played very solidly, built very solidly, and honestly just kind of beat me on that day. And uh, really took advantage of it. Really took advantage of it. So, um, yeah. And then Jack, obviously 30%. But amazing player. He had a phenomenal run taking down Owen and Jay Bear um, to make it to playoffs. As well as having an amazing season, all season, throw, showing off great uh, use of, like, Bundle and uh Skeledurge and fucking um what's his name iron thorns as well and that galay that galay was been ripping people all season so uh yeah i'm not surprised that jack did very well this season um obviously he is the reigning champion and is the first back-to-back -back champion of bbr which is a huge feat for him um he, i also knew jack would do really good in the season because of gen 9 with terra um jack's a very creative builder he thinks very outside the box and bring some kind of wacky shit, but he knows how to make it work. So very, very, uh, very happy, very formidable opponent. And I really can't be too, too mad, uh, given all of the circumstances, obviously with formidable opponent, 30% chance, misplayed a little bit. But with everything all said and done, I'm very happy with the season of BBR and uh, first season of um, Paldea as a whole. And that is gonna conclude BBR season four for everyone, including ourselves. So if you guys did enjoy this season of BBR, and if you guys did enjoy the grand finals and our run as a whole, make sure you guys hit the like button and subscribe button down below. We are about 415 subs right now, which uh, I've got a lot of support, a lot of subs, and a lot of a lot of love throughout this entire season. So thank you all so, so much for our first run in Paldea. It's been an amazing ride, and I'm very excited to uh, bring some more content to you guys uh, coming down the line. So if you guys did enjoy, like and subscribe button on the left hand side will be a youtube video recommended for you and on the right hand side will be the rest of our bbr season four playlist if you haven't checked it out already so with that i'm gonna get out of here thank you guys for watching my name is i'll see you guys next time peace i'm out bye so you stuck around uh, i wanted to do a little bit of a postseason wrap-up type of idea 
um, and also kind of talk and kind of ramble to you guys. So I guess it's like a, a mini Kirby rambles series. If you guys remember, I did a couple of those where I would literally just play Showdown and talk the most random shit. Um, this is probably because this intrigued you. If not, then I'm okay. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I kind of wanted to talk. I figured I'd put the uh, our BBR season stats uh, off of my league spreadsheet. Which, um, I know, I've shown a couple people, but I have an entire league sheet of my entire draft league history. Um, so I like, obviously, I'm a very stats nerd, so you guys can see our entire, our entire team. Everyone came up, uh, done sparse and spied ops, poor guys ain't got to do nothing, but they were they were the goats, I'll tell you what. So, yeah, kind of just me rambling, um, if you want to listen to me in the end here, and uh, give me your thoughts and such and such. But, um, yeah, with the first season of Gen 9 out of the way, there's a couple different feelings that I really wanted to kind of talk about because it's it's not the same for me and uh what i mean by that is i'm i'm not ready to jump right into the next wi-fi league which uh, i thought i was i really did but i'm not ready to just you know like like in gen 8 i would bounce one ncp bbl fucking icp the apa bop 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 i jump all around because i was in the game my head was in the game i loved it but my head's still in the game but my heart's not and Gen 9 has kind of, you know, I, there was a lot of high hopes for Gen 9, and obviously with the 20-minute timer, a lot of people are bummed. But even me, um, even after playing with it and playing Gen 9 as a whole, I'm really not in love with uh, with Gen 9. So a lot of the, the big hopes and dreams I had coming into Gen 9 aren't really realistic right now, which is kind of unfortunate. Um, yeah, Gen 9 as a whole is very unfun to me. Um, I think a lot of the new mons are very cheesy, very gimmicky, kind of annoying um as well as terra is probably the worst mechanic i've played with in draft league and that could just be new like obviously early gen syndrome but i've played both showdown and wi-fi leagues with terra different terra rules here and there and the, the less terra i play the better because it becomes more of a straight mons game but when i do it face terra i think it's incredibly unfun incredibly boring and even this season using Terra, I felt it felt very boring because I would just bring in Chen Pao and do 90% to every Pokemon, which like obviously is really cool to like have a powerful centerpiece Pokemon do that, but it's super lame to even play with. Like even after a while, you get kind of bored of it. And it's like, oh, all right, I just need to set up rocks and maybe chip this one thing just a little bit. And then Chen Pao just one shots everything in the game and it's, it's just not fun. And even playing against it as well, like Amel with Terra Ghost, I don't have a ghost resist on my team literally get 6-0'd with zero counterplay. There's physically nothing I can do to stop that with Pokemon like that. Or Terra Dragonite's another huge one that's just been ripping people, both on Showdown and Wi-Fi. Terra Normal Dragonite with E-Speed. It's not supposed to be that strong. It's not how the Pokemon was designed. But because of the new gimmick, it's now built to be like that. It has the natural bulk with multi-scale, the stab E-Speed, the Dragon Dance setup, Roost. Like, it's very unfun and very lame when Pokemon... Pokemon are built for a certain reason, and every Pokemon has checks and counters and ways you beat it. That's why I love the Draft League format. That's why I don't like, you know, Smogon, because I love being able to be creative and build and actually plan out how my how I'm going to play the game. And Because Pokemon's a lot like chess to me. You know, you really have to plan ahead and actually put effort into your teams. You can't kind of just show up. Obviously, best players can show up and do whatever, but even the best players are still going to raffle stomp bad players, you know? because they put more effort and understanding into the game. But with Gen 9, a lot of that thinking goes out of the roof because, oh, haha, now I'm a Terra, and every all the thought you put into building means nothing. So that's my, my mini Terra rant, and uh, yeah, I'm very not fond of Gen 9. It might build on me more, but in terms of, you know, jumping into the next Wi-Fi league, it's not for me right now. Um, that being said, I did do it. Um, you will see you will see cameo appearances of Kirby in PBA week one and week two against Dr. Slacking and our finals opponent Gravy respectively um, because I did play my first two weeks of PBA and I'll own it. I, I dropped. I dropped after not having fun. I dropped um, purely out of not having fun and my commentary suffered, my play suffered, my building suffered because of it. There was no point in me playing in that league which I feel bad for even joining, to be honest, but when I joined, I was still very into it because Jack asked me pretty early on, and there was still obviously the drafting period, and you know, so it was, I was in the, there for a while, so I still had that kind of, that motivation to me, but as the more I play, the less fun I have, and 
y you know, I play like four, five, six leagues at a time. I play a bunch of showdown stuff that might come to YouTube, might not. So it's not like I just played four games, lost one of them, and got mad. No, I've played a lot more than you think I have. Um, at least from a viewer's perspective, if you don't actually know me, you if you know me, you know I play a lot of mods. You know I have gotten my reps in, and you know how I feel about Terra. Um, so yeah. I have openly apologized to Jack for dropping for him. I've... You know, I've talked to I've talked a lot to Jack in the last two weeks because I played him for PBA and then instantly turned around and played him for finals. Um, so I've been talking a lot to Jack lately. He's a great person. I love Jack. He's one of the best people in the Wi-Fi community, and uh, there really aren't that many left. And that's all I'll say on that subject. But Jack is one of the great ones left, and uh, I really appreciate everything Jack does for the community and for his videos. He puts top tier content. I'll say it. I still think Jack has the best thumbnails in the in the Wi-Fi scene right now, which makes me really sad because a lot of people used to say that I have the best ones. And I used to agree with them, but if purely from an, uh, an objective or non-objective, non-biased standpoint, I think Jack's come out just a little bit cleaner than mine do uh, at this point in time. So obviously mad respect for someone who uh, puts in the effort, puts in the grind to really uh, kind of show me up and uh, in respect for that. So um, yeah, that's kind of my wrap up thoughts for Gen 9 and Wi-Fi as a whole. In terms of other leagues that I'm doing, I do have a couple like longer type videos. A lot you guys really enjoyed the uh, scripted video, the Tauros video that I did for Q, and I was really debating uh, post commentating my finals game like this. But I felt the raw commentary was a little bit more entertaining, uh, especially for the hyped finals game that a lot of people have been anxiously waiting for between two CGT coaches, um, between me and Jack as well. So obviously, me and Jack got that little bit of a rivalry at this point. We've played Jack so many times, and I just can't get him lately. Every time Jack just gets me just by a little bit, so it's just a little bit tough for me. But everyone was very uh, excited for this. Obviously, Jack was defending champion, so I felt the the live com was uh, really nice. Also, I don't have a whole lot of live comms coming up because I'm not playing in any Wi-Fi leagues. Everything I've played, I, I've already played. It's not like I can live com a game I already played. Um, but I do have some stuff for you guys. We do have IBA coming up. It is a more so for fun league um, between me and my friends Owen, Brody, uh, Ant, John. Dell, obviously all the homies, D-Ray, we're playing Gen 7 Wi-Fi, I do intend to upload my run from that, whether I do week to week or mini movies, I'm not sure, as well as my Smogon kickoff tour run, um, probably will go more in depth about it in the video, but Smogon and Smogon officially kind of affiliated itself with Draft League, thanks to Rizzo and TJ, they really put in a, an effort there to kind of gap that bridge between Smogon and, uh, and Draft League, and they held a really big tournament, and no spoilers, but I had a really good run and a lot of fun playing in it. So I'll definitely be doing a movie of that as well. If you guys do enjoy the longer form content um, for for that run as well. So let me know how you guys feel, what kind of content you guys really enjoy for like longer movie type formats, week to week, mix it up, a little bit of everything. That's how I kind of like it. I like a little bit of everything, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Have a nice little catalog for you guys. So yeah, with that, um, I don't know when the next time I see you is because everything will be post commentated. But uh, in terms of me to you guys, I'll see you when I see you, I guess. Um, and if you guys did enjoy the run as a whole, and if you guys are excited for more content and, uh, you know, just Draft League as a whole, I really appreciate all the support. The like button and subscribe button down below really mean a lot to me. All the support, it just, it, it keeps me going. So really thank you guys so much, even though it's cliche. And uh, yeah, I'm going to get out of here. Thank you guys for watching. Mind if I'll see you guys next time. Peace. I'm out. Bye.